Hey everyone, this is Mr. Isometric and in this video we are going to talk about pivot bone constraint. Now this constraint, uh, though not used much, is still a useful constraint if you want to set your pivot point dynamically. And for that, let me just construct this simple example armature. So I'm just going to go into the pose mode and let's just move this uh, bone behind because we are not going to use it. So let me just select uh, this bone and instead of calling them this bone, I can just go ahead and turn on the name. and axis and we can make the axis 0.5 let's go into the wireframe mode now we can see the local axis of each individual bone uh, also we can see the name of the bone so our bone number one let's add the constraint on bone number one we will add pivot bone constraint and as soon as we add it you'll see that the constraint starts working without any errors or without any complications so we can just rotate this bone and you'll see that nothing has changed well for change you need to plug some values over here so right now we are using relative offset, which means that if I add one meter of offset uh, on this bone, on the constraint bone itself, then it will start cal calculating that offset with respect to my bone itself. So if my bone head is over there, then it will calculate one unit over there. So right now my pivot on the X axis is over there right now. And if I try to rotate it on the Y, you'll see that it is not working. And the reason why is because of the rotation range. So for now, I'm just going to keep it at always. And now if I rotate it on the Y, you'll see that my bone is rotating around that pivot point. Now, if I rotate it on the Z, you'll see that my bone is also rotating on the Z uh, on this pivot point over there. OK, now if I rotate it on the X, you'll see that my bone is also rotating on that pivot point because they are in the same axis. You'll not see any difference in the X. But as soon as I move this over here, you'll see that my bone right now, if I rotate it on the X, my pivot moved with me. So right now my head is over here and I added one unit of offset from this head to over there. So now right now my pivot is over there and if I rotate on the X, it is still actually rotating over there, but uh, they are in the same plane basically. So uh, you will not see much, but if I rotate it on the Y, you'll see that now it is rotating over there. And if I rotate it on the Z, you'll see that it is now rotating over that pivot point over there. Okay. So that's how the relative offset works. Now, if I uh, just uh, reset everything and now let's go ahead and uh, remove this relative offset so right now it is calculating the pivot point with respect to our armature origin which is over there so it has added now one unit offset uh, over there so right now my pivot point is over there and if i rotate it you'll see that nothing has changed because my bone was initially over there itself so now if i move my bone one unit ahead like this uh, still my pivot point is over there so right now, if I rotate it on the Y, you'll see that it is rotating over this point. Awesome. So now if I rotate it on the Z, uh, I hope this gives you some idea about how this constraint works. OK, similarly, you can add Y and Z offset uh, also and it will work differently. So whatever your case is, it will work like that. Now let's talk about rotation range and then we will talk about the target. So quickly, let me just uh, reset everything. And now as we have offsetted it on the X axis over there, uh, what I will do is I will rotate it on the Y positive Y only. So this is our rotation range. So when I rotate it on the Y, uh, you'll see that it is rotating over that pivot point, right? So if I go into the side view and if I now rotate it, you'll see that my bone is rotating similarly, but there is some change. As soon as my bone goes be below the X axis, you'll see that it is snapping back to its original position. And why is it doing that? Okay. So the rotation range, if you select Y rotation and if you try to rotate your bone on the Y direction, it will rotate 180 degree in the positive direction. Uh, on the top left corner, you can see it is right now at 143.28 degrees. So as soon as it goes to 180 degree, it will flip itself and it will go into the negative direction. Obviously, this rotation is uh, called as quaternion rotation. So it goes from 0 to 180 and then minus 180 to 0 again. But you cannot see that over there. So it will go from 180 to 360. Uh, so technically, that is the negative direction. So if I now start rotating in, in the opposite direction, you will see that the value is negative. And as soon as it goes to negative 180, it will start moving around the pivot again 
right so technically you can say that what rotation range is it is a range uh, of the whatever axis you choose so right now it is positive y rotation so it will work in that direction to 180 degrees and after that it will just stop working okay so in the positive y direction the constraint will work and as soon as it goes beyond that it's as good as the constraint is not working anymore okay so now if i select negative y rotation uh, if i move it in the positive direction you'll see that the pivot is not working but as soon as I go into the negative direction, my pivot is working again. So that's how rotation range works. Same goes with the Z direction. I'll just show you guys. So I just selected the Z rotation. I have selected the positive Z. So if I rotate in the positive, it rotates. And as soon as I cross 180 threshold, it will snap back. So that's how this uh, rotation works. Okay, so that's how the rotation range works. I'm just going to keep it at always if you want uh, it to not have that barrier anymore more so it will work in both directions if you just keep it at always so right now let's uh, talk about the target if i choose the target so let's choose the armature and let's select our bone number two so right now my bone number two is the pivot of me and uh, let me just make everything zero okay so now i can uh, move this bone anywhere and this bone is my origin right now uh, or you can say pivot uh, i just called it origin um, so now if i rotate this on the z axis you'll see that it is rotating around bone number two and now if i move this bone say over there and if i try to rotate it on the z again as you can see it is rotating around that bone awesome so that's how the target works but still there is one more thing uh, you can uh, either ask it to follow the head or the tail so right now my tail is the point at which the bone is rotating so my pivot is now shifted over on the tail of the bone and it is right now at the center of the bone so you can use this if you want but i'll suggest that keep it at something constant just keep it at the head you can animate this value if you want by the way also you can add a rotation range if you want uh, for some reason so i can make it on the z and if i rotate it on the z in the positive direction it will only work that way so i'm just going to keep it always okay so now as you can see our relative checkbox is gone so whatever offset you add after this it will be calculated from this pivot bone itself so now if i add offset of one in the x direction then as you can see if i rotate it on the z right now my pivot is not over there but it is actually shifted over there so if i rotate it on the z you'll see that my bone is rotating over this point over there okay so that's how it works and similar y and z you can add them if you want but i'll just suggest that instead of adding offset right now with that i, I can just move the target itself so yeah this is still handy like uh, this uh, numpad or you can say this is still handy like you can add values in this and animate them in the graph editor or you can directly animate the bone itself so let me show you guys what happens when you uh, use target so there is one weird thing uh, that if i move this bone in the global y direction you can see that my bone is moving in its uh, local y direction and if i move it in my global z it moves in its uh, local z uh, x is the same so it it doesn't get affected uh, and now if i try to move my bone in the local z it moves in the global z and if i move it in my local y it moves in the global y so yeah this is just a thing that you have to keep in mind so if you're trying to move the bone it will move a little bit differently so yeah that is one thing that you have to keep in mind so that's how the pivot uh, bone constraint works i think you guys at this point know what the influence slider does it turns your constraint on and off and it acts as a weight value if there are constraints on top or bottom yeah do use this influence slider if you want and uh, yeah if you can animate this uh, its rotation and if you move this uh, the pivot will change and it will give some nice effects so yeah that's it for the pivot bone constraint i have talked about all of this bone constraint in their own separate videos and that video is in a single playlist that playlist is obviously available on my youtube channel link will be in the description below so this series is actually going really well and i'm getting a really good feedback from you all guys so thank you all so much for uh, watching and learning with me
if you want to support me and help me make more such videos then all you have to do is for free subscribe like and share uh, you can also support me on Kofi. Uh, there are blender files over there of my previous tutorials uh, they are free of course and they will always stay free also i have a discord server so in any of this video if you have any doubt you can either ask them in the comment section below or you can join my discord and you can ask me or dm me over there personally i will check as soon as i can and yeah hope you all learned something new and hope this video helped in your project uh, thank you all so much for watching i'll see you in the next video Bye bye